Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But before we get started, I wanted to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and from our brother Sothenius. I am writing to God's church in Corinth, to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you, now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way. With all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge, this confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this, for He is faithful to do what He says, and He has invited you into partnership with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no division in the church. Rather, be of one mind united in thought and purpose. For some members of Cleo's household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. Some of you are saying, I am a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos, or I follow Peter, or I follow only Christ. Has Christ been divided into f factions? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. For now, no one can say they were baptized in my name. Oh yes, I, only, I also baptized the household of Stephanus, but I don't remember baptizing anyone else. For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news, and not with clever speech for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God, as the scriptures say. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish, since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom. He has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven, and it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those who but to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest human plans, and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considered foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the 
what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus for our benefit. God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Amen. So what did you think of 1 Corinthians chapter 1? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so it's 1 Corinthians chapter one starts off with um, greetings from Paul and he's just letting you know them know that this is who's writing and um, who he's writing to he's writing to the church in Corinth and um, he's just saying that um, you have been called by God to be his own holy people so just a reminder for you you have been called by God so a lot of people are like I don't know what God has called me to do um, and here right here it says you have been called his own holy people so you have been called to be made holy by Christ Jesus um, so if you're looking for something to be called about that is something that you're called about to be like Christ Jesus to be holy just like him so seek to get to know who Jesus is, you know, spend time in your word, finding out who Jesus is and asking the Holy Spirit to mold you into um, his likeness. Um, so then the next section is Paul gives thanks to God. And he says, I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gift he has given you now that you belong to Christ. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way. Um, so again, just remember that um, God ha gives you these gifts. He gives you the gift of, you know, being able to speak better. He gives you knowledge. He gives you wisdom. He increases you in every way. Um, you are always so much better off with God than you are without God. You are better um, on your worst day with God than you would ever be on your best day by yourself. Um, and it says this confirms what I've told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Jesus Christ so you have everything that you need right now living inside you you just have to claim it and call upon it so if you're ever feeling not enough or less than or lacking call on the Holy Spirit to fill that gap where whatever you're lacking whatever you're missing call on the Holy Spirit to fill that gap um, and then it says he will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns so remember to um, I wrote over here, thank God for keeping me strong and just remember to call on that strength in Christ and be thankful for the grace that keeps you blameless um, until Christ returns. And then it says that um, he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So just take a moment to think about what that partnership really means. Having that partnership so that you don't have to be everything. You don't have to be enough. Because you have that partnership with Christ Jesus, He is enough. So He is living within you. So whatever, again, whatever it is that you are lacking, you can call upon Him to draw that out of you, to um, fill you up when you don't feel like enough or when you feel empty. Um, so make sure that you just spend some time thinking about what that partnership really means, having that partnership with Him. Um, what having his grace means um, and then this next section is division in the church and I really love this section because I feel like this just explains our world um, to this day there's so much division in our church we should be unifying and living in harmony with each other but instead we let simple doctrines separate us to say this is my denomination this is your denomination this is what I believe this is what you believe but I mean there's only one Bible so which Bible are you reading? Um, I just don't really understand. So I think that it's important that we seek to live in harmony with each other. We shouldn't be bashing other ministries. We shouldn't be um, downplaying. That is for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to handle and to deal with. The judgment is God's and God's alone. Um, so we need to stop judging each other um, and just stick to what's written in here. Um, you know, let's, let's let the Bible unify us instead of divide us. It says, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. Um, so obviously the enemy is 
weaving his way through the church, creating cracks and division amongst us. And we just need to um, do everything that we can to be of one mind and of um, united in thought and purpose. You know, really spend time in the word and not trying to make it mean whatever we want it to mean. Um, so then the next section is the wisdom of God. And I just love this section because it is so beautiful. And it says, God chose the powerless to shame the powerful. He, sh he chose the weak um, to make the strong, um, you know, to, to humble the strong. And um, it says, God made the wisdom of this world look foolish. So the people who, who think that they know everything, um, he made them look foolish. They are foolish in his sight. He said, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So those people that think they know it all, um, you know, they will come to the realization soon enough. Um, so then it says, this foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans. The God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Um, so it says, instead, God chose the things of this world considered foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerful, I mean powerless, to shame those who are powerful. Um, and it says, God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring nothing to what the world considers as important. And I love this because um, being somebody who has been bullied and tormented a lot, um, and just has, you know, I've felt like I'm not enough, and I'm less than, and I've felt hated by a lot of people. And it just reminds me that God uses people like that. You know, so if you're feeling bullied, if you're feeling despised, if you feel like you're not enough, just remember that God is setting you apart for something important. He's setting you apart to bring nothing to what the world considers important. So that what the world considers to be loved and, and wonderful, he's going to shame that. And when they consider you to be nothing and bullying you, he's going to exalt you. He's going to rise you up. He's going to honor you. So just remember that. And, you know, that just having that reminder in me when I'm thinking about my weakness and I'm reminded about how God uses our weakness to show his strength, to show his power. And so we can then just be, um, you know, grateful for our weaknesses because it brings glory to God when he is able to do amazing things through us despite our weaknesses. Um, and it says, as a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. And he does this so that they can't say it's on their own strength or on their own might. It's, it's, it's through God that all this is possible. It says, God has united you with Christ Jesus. So we are in partnership with Christ Jesus. And that's what allows God the opportunity to use us the way he does. And it says, for our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. So we have wisdom itself living inside us. We just have to claim it and call upon it. We have to stay in the spirit, spend time in our word, and just ask the Holy Spirit, ask Jesus Christ to guide us and lead us and give us that wisdom when we need it. And it says, Christ has made us right with God. He has made us pure and holy, and he has freed us from all sin. Therefore, if you want to boast, boast about only about the Lord. So we can't boast about ourselves and what we're good at and what we've done. It's all God and, and, and the, the God living in us, Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit living in us that allows us to, you know, do or be successful and prosperous at anything. So that is my interpretation of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence, and have a great rest of your day. I love you.